Hello, my friends, my warriors. This is Mary Mack of the Mary Mack Show. And I wanted to make sure that I spoke to you about the devastating Saturday that we just witnessed in the United States. Politicians that are true and want to do the right thing, they are in the most danger. Because those who have been profiting from politics for all their life, some of whom have never done anything else in their life except be a politician, similar to Biden and Obama. Never did anything for the greater good, never signed the front of a check, never had anyone give them a job or never created jobs and were entrepreneurs. They just rode off the coattails of the American people. Pathetic, actually. And so now we have President Trump, who is doing his darndest to be able to become president again and to make things right for the people of this country. And what do we see? We see media who continually, and politicians, continually demonize him in so many ways. And it's quite pathetic, really. When you know you're not doing the right thing, you have to kill the other messenger, don't you? And the thing that raises its ugly head again and again is that people will say, well, he was a felon now. He has been convicted. He, this is all trash. This has all been going on intentionally so that he will not win the presidency this year. And now with this assassination attempt, and I hope that he is well and that his family and friends are good and healthy and will be all through the coming election and beyond. But we have a group of people in power who will do anything to keep him from becoming president. And we all know that. And they call even his devotees, his MAGA people. He calls them, they call them deplorables and all kinds of names. Quite pathetic. Grasping at straws. But what really has me so sad is that we now have two new grieving children. Two. We have a daughter named Allison and her sister, whose name I don't know yet. But she posted a statement about her father, whose name is Corey, and I'm hoping that I say this correctly, Comparatore, Comparatore. And he was a retired fire chief. And her da his daughter is speaking out about what happened yesterday, July 13, 2024, in Butler, Pennsylvania, at what should have been a phenomenal rally with people who come together and want to support President Trump. Instead, this man lost his life only for attending a rally. And it's horrific. But I want to read what she said. And I'm going to put this information, this passage, in the show notes so you can reread the horror that this young girl, her sister and her mom, and all of their friends and family are now going to begin experiencing this nightmare because one person decided 
He didn't like President Trump. Pathetic. And she says, he was the best dad a girl could ever ask for. The media will not tell you that he died a real life superhero. They are not going to tell you how quickly he threw my mom and I to the ground. And they are not going to tell you that he shielded my body from the bullet that came at us. And she keeps going. Yesterday, time stopped. And when it started again, my family and I started living a real life nightmare. When you suppose, excuse me, what was supposed to be an exciting day that we were all looking forward to, especially my dad, turned into the most traumatic and experience, tra traumatizing experiences someone could imagine. I know the media will cover this event, and I'm going to try my best to stay away from looking at everything, especially because I've already seen and lived through it in real time. But I want everyone to know what the media will not cover and will not say about him. He was the best dad a girl could ask for. My sister and I never needed for anything. You call, he would answer. And, you, and he would do whatever it is you needed. And if he didn't know how, he would figure it out. He could talk and make friends with anyone, which he was doing all day yesterday and loved every minute of it. He was man of God, loved Jesus fiercely, and also looked after our church and our members as family. The media will not tell you that he died a real life superhero, she says again. They're, they are not going to tell you how quickly he threw my mom and I to the ground. They are not going to tell you that he shielded my body from the bullet that came at us. He loved his family. He truly loved us enough to take a real bullet for us. And I want nothing more than to cry on him and tell you, thank, tell him thank you. I want nothing more than to wake up and for this to not be reality for me and my family. We lost a selfless, loving husband, father, brother, uncle, son, and friend. And I will never stop thinking about him and mourning over him until the day that I die too. July 13th will forever be the day that changed my life. I will never be the same person I was less than 24 hours ago. There are a lot of children out there that say their dad is their hero, but my dad really is mine. I don't think I would be here today without him. Dad, I love you so much that there aren't enough words to express how deep that love goes. I know you'll give heaven some help. <laughs> I know that God is proud of the man that came to his gates yesterday. And that was signed, Allison Compriatori. Allison and your sister, newly grieving children. I send our blessings. There is no word that will help you get over what you're going through right now. Some people say time heals wounds. I don't know about that. 
it's a difficult road ahead. All of us here will be thinking of you and your family. And we're so grateful that you posted something wonderful about your dad that we can appreciate. It was a wonderful post and I'm so happy to be able to share it with my audience. And we're sending our love to you and everyone your dad knew. I'd also like to say thank you to President Trump for all he's doing for the people of America. If he wasn't running, I can't even imagine where we'd be at this point. With all the inflation and the crime, with all the wars that are being started for absolutely no reason, except for financial gain, which is pathetic, and all the money that is being spent by this administration, the taxpayer dollars that are not going back to the taxpayer. They're going overseas to other countries or more than likely laundering the money for all the politicians who sent it and agreed. Yes, I said it. And to all the people who are in the United States illegally, how do you deal with all that? They put the citizens at risk each and every day. And as time goes on, it's going to get even worse. President Trump, we are grateful that you have taken this on and that you exposed yourself to this assassination attempt that you never expected. Or if you did expect it, we had people by your side who weren't the best. What would happen? if we asked the elite forces of our country who are retired to come together and offer their services to protect him wherever he went and protect his family because we know he is not a fan of the FBI and the FBI is not a fan of his, neither is the CIA. This is all well known now. So much truth has come out. If our country is going to get back on track, we need free and fair elections. And I believe if we use the machines by Dominion, we will never have a fair and free election because too many people can manipulate the returns. If we have drop boxes, if we have mail-in ballots, so much can be manipulated. Overseas, in various countries, they just have drop boxes on the day, only on the day of voting and that drop box is at their precinct. And people take their piece of paper and mark who they want as their next leader, fold it and put it in a box. And those boxes then go with armed guards to a centralized system. We're out in the open on huge tables. Every vote is counted. Seems to me that's the better way to go where no manipulation can take place and there are people standing around all over to help count those ballots and to make sure they're counted properly. Now, the last thing I'd like to say is if America is going to be saved by God, 
Yes, I'm bringing him into the equation. Because you know, that is where we went wrong. We took God out of the schools in the 60s, and ever since then, all hell has broken loose, hasn't it? People don't think about aborting a baby. And legislatures in all different states allow children to be killed after they're out of the womb. What is up with that? New York State allows that. You can kill your own child after you've given birth to it. How sick is that? We have very evil people in this world and their heads are being raised up now. We see that, we know that. All these secrets are coming out in the open. All these sacrifices of children, all these young ones who can't be found, hundreds of thousands of children who came over the border, who now are in the middle of horrific situations where they're being used as pawns, either sacrificed or raped and murdered, child trafficking all over the world, how do you lose hundreds of thousands of children who came over the border? No one gave DNA tests to these children to ensure that the person they were with was really indeed their parent. We kind of let that go. We didn't want to spend the money on that. Horrific, huh? And all the women who were raped on the way up into this country. Can you imagine having your life completely altered by these crimes? Anyway, if we are going to bring God back into our lives and ask his forgiveness for all of this, we need to pray, ask forgiveness, bow before him, and tell him to please bless our nation. But if we don't do that, we are doomed. And I know this is pretty heavy duty to talk about these things. But this is real life right now in the United States and many, many places around the world. Many places. We've had assassination attempts on other world leaders. The prime minister of Japan was murdered a few years back. Just like here now, the people in Japan dealt with their grief. It was a horrific assassination. And if the unthinkable had happened yesterday, I can't even imagine what our country would go through. So I'm asking you, please pray for the United States. Wherever you are in this entire world, please pray for USA. We need it. So I'm going to say a prayer now, and I will say it slowly. And maybe you can pray it with me or immediately after each sentence that I say. And give it to other people. Send this video or this audio to others. Put it on your social media platforms. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so this will go far and wide and like and comment on it. And if you want to comment with your own short prayer, be my guest. I believe the Lord saved President Trump yesterday. Yes, I do. Because President Trump believes in the Lord and he believes that he was 
sent to do this work by the Lord. And that gives him the faith he needs to keep going. Lord, thank you for President Trump and his courage to continue in the face of such fierce adversity. We have no idea the trauma he and his family had faced since he first declared to run for presidency in 2015. Every day, there are people who either want to kill him or condemn him or blame him, make fun of him. We are asking you, Lord, to give this man the strength he needs to be able to persevere through this trauma and through this nightmare. Give him every ounce of strength, emotional strength, physical strength that he needs to keep pressing forward. It says in your word that if we will bow and move from our wicked ways and ask your forgiveness that you will heal our land. And because there are people listening to me right now who are praying with me, whenever two pray in your name, it will be done. So I'm believing this will be done. I ask you to please comfort all those who were harmed, killed, and are struggling to regain their strength from their wounds after being shot at the rally yesterday. And I'm also asking you to please comfort all the people who were at the rally, all the people who saw this live, all those who continue to see this video and feel especially wounded that this would ever take place. Comfort them, love on them, Lord, and help them realize that you are there for them in their darkest hours. No matter what they're going through emotionally, financially, physically, even spiritually. They might be mad at you right now for what happened, but give them the guidance they need to know you love them and you love President Trump. And all those watching me. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you for being with me today. The shock, the unbelievable shock, and the unbelievableness of this whole day. Just craziness. And there's unfortunately a lot more to come. So each day, I ask you to please pray. Pray for yourself, your family. Pray for those in all the nations around the world who are enduring such devastating, devastating trauma of so many in so many ways. So many ways. Give them peace. Give them love. Reach out your hand and let them know you love them wherever they are in the world. 
and I will see you again soon. Love you.